In the last two videos, we have seen that the most common materials used in negative and positive electrodes. In this video, we will look into the electrolytes and the separators for lithium ion cells. Let's start with the electrolyte. You might remember that electrolyte is the media that conducts ions between the electrodes internal to the cells and that in a general electrochemical cell the electrolyte consists of a solvent into which we dissolve either a salt or an acid or a base some battery cells use an electrolyte whose solvent is water and we call those aqueous cells but if you look at the electrochemical cells you will notice that water dissociate into hydrogen gas and oxygen gas at a potential of around 2 volts so any battery cells having voltage higher than 2 volt cannot use water as its solvent. The slight exception to this is the lead acid battery cell that has voltage that's often a little bit over 2 volts per cell. And the reason that this is possible is that when sulfuric acid is dissolved in the water that slightly changes the voltage with which water breaks down into hydrogen and oxygen. It slightly elevates that voltage and makes a 2 volt battery cell possible. But it's not possible to get at much above 2 volts. And so an aqueous solution in a lead acid battery cells actually works. But an aqueous solution would not work for a lithium ion battery cell because this typically have overall voltage much higher than 2 volts and usually higher than 3 volts as well. So instead, the lithium ion battery cells are made using electrolytes that are non aqueous and they are built using organic solvents plus a lithium based salt that dissolves into that solvent. The electrolyte in a lithium ion battery cell acts purely as an ion conductor, which does not take part in the normal chemical reactions for charging and discharging of the battery cell. The table shows some of the most common solvents that are used in electrolytes in lithium ion battery cells. These include ethylene carbonate, propylene carbonate, dimethyl carbonate, ethyl methyl carbonate, and dimethyl carbonate. The table also shows the common abbreviations that you will see in the literature. Each of the solvents has slightly different properties. Some of them become essentially solid at temperatures below 0 degrees Celsius. So, these solvents are not appropriate for battery cells that must be operated at low temperature. Other cause the cell to degrade more or less rapidly. Even though the solvent does not participate in the normal reaction of charging and discharging a battery cell, it can participate in undesired side reaction that slowly cause the cell to deteriorate over time. And so, to get the most desirable properties in a design, so that it works well at cold temperatures and warm temperatures and it doesn't degrade quickly often these solvents are mixed together in the electrolyte in different ratios if you look at the chemical bond structure of each of the solvents that drawn in the table you will notice that they are different in many ways but similar in one way at the top of each one of these molecules there's an oxygen that is double bonded with a carbon atom this double bond causes the oxygen atom to develop a slight negative charge and the other parts of the molecule to develop a slight positive charge. So the overall molecule is slightly polarized and it's this polarization that allows the solvents to dissolve salts. So when we add a salt which if you remember is an ionic compound that has one component that's positively charged and one component that's negatively charged. This salt will easily break down into a cation and an anion inside of the solvent. So it will make a good electrolyte for the lithium ion battery cell. The most commonly used salt in a lithium ion battery cell is lithium hexafluorophosphate which is quite difficult to say. So I will simply call it LIPF6 instead. There are some other candidate salts that are used and these include lithium tetrafluoroborate and lithium perchlorate. 
These are used for some reasons, but they are certainly not as common as LAPF6. As we talked earlier, this hormone does not participate in the normal chemical reactions in the lithium ion battery cells, but different solvents have different properties with respect to aging and low temperature performance and so forth. And in the same way, different salts have different properties with respect to aging and so forth. But they don't usually have much impact on how a battery management system conducts its day-to-day -day life. And so, we don't have very much opportunity to discuss the design choice of building a salt. So, because the solvent does not participate in the chemical reaction, but the salt does. Because the salt is a charge carrier through the solvent. It's common to refer to the electrolyte simply by naming it salt and by kind of omitting what the solvent is. Even though the electrolyte we know includes the solvent and the salt. So we might refer to an LIPF6 electrolyte and it's simply understood that there's also solvent mixed in that we are not mentioning. Lithium ion battery cells must also have a separator. The separator is a preamble membrane that has tiny holes in it and these holes are large enough that ions can pass through them. But they are also small enough that the positive and negative electrode can't touch each other. If they were to touch each other, you would have a short circuit which would lead to heat buildup and thermal runaway. Possibly it would catch fire or an explosion. For this reason, the separator also must be an electronic insulator. We can't allow electrons to flow across the separator, but we want ions to flow very easily through the pores in the separator. The image shows a separator material that's used in some lithium ion battery cells. And to the unaided eye, it looks just like a thin sheet of wet plastic. And you can even see the fingers through the material. It's that thin. But if you look at it under the magnification, it's possible to see these tiny pores between the fibers of the material. The pores are large enough for the ions to go through, but they are small enough that the electron materials cannot contact each other. And that's illustration in this photograph which shows a scanning electron microscope picture of a single particle of lithium magnesium oxide material on top of a separator to give an idea of the relative scale and you can see that the pores in the separator material are much 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 smaller than a particle size so that particles on either side of the separator will not contact each other but that the ions can still flow through the pore openings <laughs> lithium ion battery cells also have current collectors and these are made from metal foils onto which the electrode materials are deposited. The purpose of the current collector is to conduct electrons from the electrode materials to the tab of the terminals of the cell to the outside circuit. And these foils are subjected to very harsh environments inside the cell. The lithium ions in the electrode and also the fluorine based ions in the electrolyte tend to be very reactive chemically and they want to undergo chemical reactions. So we choose current collector materials very carefully so that they will not be degraded by the interior chemical environment of the cell. In every lithium ion battery cell of which I am aware, the positive electrode current collector is aluminum foil. And this is chosen because aluminum tends not to react to anything as long as its potential is about 3 volts or higher. And the positive electrode active materials are chosen to have higher potential and in the normal operating region of the lithium ion battery cells then they will not react with this aluminum and cause any damage to it. In the negative electrode the current collector almost always a copper foil and that's again chosen because if any potentials lower than about 2 volts the copper is stable electrochemically and will not react. The image shows a simple roll of aluminum foil that you might use in your kitchen for food products and the foil that we are talking about for lithium ion battery cells are actually very very similar to these. So to conclude, 
the electrolyte in a lithium ion battery cell compromise both a solvent and a salt the most common salt lpf6 dissociates into a lithium cation in the solvent and a pf6 anion as well the pf6 anion turns out to be inert towards strong reducing agent such as lithium metal and that makes it very attractive inside the cell because it will not react with them we have also seen that it must have small pores or holes in it that allows the electrolyte to permeate through the separator and allows the cations and anions in the electrolyte to move back and forth so that the normal operation of the battery cells can happen i hope you found this video very informative share this video with your friends and see you in next video